All right, warriors, welcome back. This is a breathing exercise, five seconds. Uh, we're gonna breathe in deep, hold it, release together. And for, you know, a, a moment, let's kind of put aside all, you know, some of this butt hurt. That we're not saying forget it. Look, as a matter of fact, I'll let you in on a little secret. Uh, addressing this healing, hitting it head on. Oh man, you're awesome for that. And, and and as soon as you recognize the fact that it's never a journey in life to forget, it's from those hurts and failures that we learn the most. And so what you gravitate toward is not forgetting, but managing it. You see, by throwing narcissists a curve is to be able to alchemize everything they tried to use to destroy you is fuel. And it's why narcissists hate that you figured this out. You can recharge your own batteries. You run on such high octane that it isn't up until now, right now, right now, did you realize you had a buttload of freeloaders hanging on, ready to pulverize your frenemies. And all these freeloaders were riding high on your back. Now, walking away and gracing reprobate with your absence and silence, narcissists gas off. They go through mortification. They're not going to admit it to you. Matter of fact, they're going to look like they were so much better off without you. And we're going to talk about what is it exactly that happens when you leave the narcissist. So stick around. Oh, we're going to talk. We're going to talk. And look, sip your coffee now while you can. Okay, because once we get well, once we get going, oh, we ain't stopping. The coastline's wide open, and we're gonna take a badass walk. But I don't need you spitting your leche or your coffee out your nose. That shit stings. <laughs> let's take five seconds to chill, and let's not listen with hurt ears. Let's listen with healing ears. so that we can get past the part of triggers and emotions to the what, what part of the healing. Five seconds, man, let's do this. Release slowly. <laughs> All right, all right. All right, Warriors. Check this out. What happens when you leave a narcissist, and, and keep in mind, narcissists will be projecting this onto you. Like I said, they, they want you to believe that they were so much better off without you. And what they're waiting to happen is you prove by your actions that were very much a part of what they it's necessary in order for their prophetic words and their smear campaign to work and that is for you to become reactionary look see everyone is not prepared to listen to your truth because their truth has been diluted by the lie that was planted as seeds long ago and it's why you need to remain indifferent because once you realize that, well, 
when you leave the narcissist, within about 30 days, you're going to soon realize that you were much more better best, bestest office without them. It's kind of like this. It, it's it's kind of like playing a country song backwards. That's what you get. You see, you get your sanity back. You get your house back. You get your boat back. You get your dog back. Your money, your energy, your time. And peace. And all you had to do is walk away. Don't run. Walk. And you need you well know, and those of you in it need to know. You don't need to be overly excited because a narcissist will catch on. And so you keep your head down low and you ease on out because one thing we learn from this journey is that narcissism can only be neutralized, but can't be pre prevented or stopped ever. So the idea is to be able to allow the narcissist to believe that they're winning when they're losing. And so by knowing what is it that the narcissist do? How, what, what are their behavior traits? You have to understand that part first in order to know reverse narcology. And I'll give you an example of that. It's kind of like understanding by paying attention and observing and in silence and, and not personalizing shit. What you're going to realize is Narcissists have a private persona, a working persona, and a going out persona. Listen to me. Covert, malignant, and even overt have these different masks. Authenticity is the same no matter what. It doesn't matter if they're professional or they're in private, they're at Walmart, they're at the church, at the park, floating the river. They're the same. And see, patterns of behavior that are being missed in the fog of love, the love bomb, limerence. Limerence does not allow you to see the red flags. You see, for some of y'all, the narcissist had nothing to do with it. The narcissist couldn't have power or have invited itself into your space without you first lying to yourself. Now, once you figure this shit out, of course, now narcissists hate you. Uh, they kind of got used to you loving them like that. And you accepted the bare minimum. You soon realize in others because you didn't, you're no longer going to deny yourself to, to live in this lie, right? You're not going to allow yourself to believe that being politically correct is a kind gesture. It's an act of unkindness to not call out and demand changed behavior. It's never the wrong decision doing the right thing. You see, warriors, narcissists are going to express rage, uncontrollable rage, and they will totally deny they were angry after becoming explosive. You just can't take a joke. And in fact, they'll even be the first to tell you, oh, you can dish it out, but you can't take it. <laughs> but it's a gesture of uh, inflicting. It's almost like a second apology. The second apology is worse than the initial insult. So warriors, narcissists are going to express... 
their own criticism to sound like concern. They're very good at wordplay. And the manipulation is real. They have a total lack of empathy, but can it can show overwhelming em empathy em as a public persona, that, that mask. But as soon as that switch cuts off, that private persona takes over. It all depends on do they feel guilty, attacked, or are others going to perceive a certain shame upon them? So the mask evolves, the shape shifting. Now, warriors, how do you make a narcissist pay for all this shit that they've done to you? I'm going to share something with you. Uh, it's hilarious because uh, it's another article from uh, Robert. <laughs> and look, this way, I don't know if he sent it to us or if the girls found it, but I know this much. It got my damn attention because it's a cucaracha. <laughs> <laughs> a giant cucaracha. But I want to read this to you. It says, how do you make a narcissist pay for all the damage they've caused you? Treat them with aggressive disdain. And look, I'm going to read this to you, but I want the insight to come from a perspective of not so much co-parenting, because you kind of have to remain neutrally uh, and respectfully cooperative is the, is, is the end goal. Uh, but more so for dealing with toxicity, narcissism, and sociopaths, psychopaths in the work environment. I believe this would be something that would become... Uh, operative knowledge that can be applied in your day to day and keep in mind this isn't for everybody for some of you look you just need to lay low and shut the fuck up some of you are in positions where you can cannot go and be neutral when your authority is being challenged. Because that's what narcissists do. Warriors, you treat them with aggressive disdain. You keep it borderline detectable. In other words, the disdain is obvious. And it's not subtle. It's like, man. Or as soon as someone shows us, like you again. Okay, and, and be very busy around them. Be sneer. Keep your feelings barely suppressed. Alternatively, act polite in the way police officers do, implying rather than explicitly pointing out the idiocracy. A tone of, are you aware, sir, that you are a complete shit? Well, are, are you? I mean, it's kind of like... Uh, Master Sergeant Attitude. Master Chief. <laughs> yeah. That kind of, that, that kind of, I, I can imagine that. Okay, and another, make excuses to leave. Treat them as though they are invisible. Lecture them as though they are a child. Roll your eyes a lot, snort, shake your head, mug it, mug it up, and make it so fake and phony with no emotions. If any emotions need to be expressed, phony emotions is the best medicine. For too long, you've idealized the narcissist. So you've put them on a pedestal and made them extremely gallant and significant. And what you're doing is, with this reverse narcology, is a total opposite. And you make it so obviously so. They're going to know immediately what you're doing because what they're coming back for is for you to put them back on their throne. You see, a throne, they didn't qualify, nor did they have the intelligence to ever sit in. Matter of fact, <laughs> once you come into this knowledge, you are very much aware that narcissists never wear a pimple on your ass. This is the kind of care I want you to take, okay? Just to be cautious. It reminds me of this joke. 
this dude married a female narcissist and they happened to be in Jerusalem. He thought maybe by visiting the Holy Land, it might do, it might move her for a better way of life, maybe a different insight in life. They go to Jerusalem and uh, he, he prayed hard, right, on the rock. Prayed for a change. Well, the next morning wakes up, his wife's dead. I mean, graveyard dead. Caretakers show up, and the locals from Jerusalem, and they said, "Hey, look, for five hundred dollars, we can bury her here in the Holy Land, or it might cost you about anywhere from forty to sixty thousand dollars to have her put in a crate and shipped to the U.S." And he thought he didn't even think about it. He didn't hesitate. He said, "Nope, put her in the crate, ship her." God's like, wait a minute, you're not even going to think about it? He said, oh, oh I, I thought about it. He says, the story goes, there was a fella one time that was buried here. And three days later, Rose, I can't take no chances. <laughs> <laughs> Warriors, this is why we don't need to ignore big mistakes. Red flags. You see, through the fog is a frog. And ignoring the red flags because of limerence, having precious thoughts of someone before you even know their name is the first lie. The first lie to yourself. Anything after that, it's hard to see the sin. When you put in your throat right up to the guillotine. Big mistake you don't ever need to ignore. Y'all, I got so excited, I done throwed my mic on the straw. Big mistakes, big mistakes. Don't understand why people think it is rude to floss in a restaurant. <laughs> Can't even connect their TV without calling customer service for help. Marriage? Family? They're prisons, man-made prisons. <laughs> Loves reaching the stage in a relationship where they are not embarrassed to fart. Mm-hmm. You know what's going on if it's a shark. Enough said. Enough said. Sancho visiting. Has a bad habit of laughing at serious matters. Thrives on criticism. Got to make shit up if it ain't there. Stubbornly refuses to change her status to in a relationship when they are. I bet you if all these talk talks and and Facebooks and Twatters and X's and all this shit. If they had a button that said situation shit, overwhelmingly, that one would dominate it all. Refuses to go to the doctor for any reason. Yeah. Unless the Hellcat's on fire. If you like long walks on the beach, snuggling in front of the TV and doing all the housework, they're yours. Done. And <laughs> if this doesn't work out, they'll just give up dating forever. Yeah, move to Mars. Drives 10 miles an hour under the speed limit. Hey, check this one out. Holy shit. Frozen their eggs just in case this dating thing takes too long. A whole nother... Uh, Meaning to, and go fuck yourself. <laughs> All right, y'all, check this out. Another glove box cookie. Let's check this out. What is the distance between the eyes and the soul? 
I know this here fortune cookie didn't just ax me a course to the fuck do I know? My third eye chakra. It's not that much of a big distance, is it? <laughs> Warriors, open your eyes. Every morning, your nose lies to your mind and blocks that smell of ass coming out your mouth. How much distance between your nose and that one? Not much. Mind, body, and soul. Your love got played with. Your intuition told you so. Either you're going to learn the test in life or you're doomed to repeat the lesson. Now get out there and own it. Shake the dirt off your ass. You ain't nobody's bitch. Ain't no stupid people allowed. And they know who they are. That's why they shit test. They know what it feels like to run in to a full-blown warrior. See, they just watch you to see how bad your acting is. It's laughable. You see, narcissists throughout the annals of history, they've always been the entertainment. Hilarious little shits. <laughs> it's never goodbye, warriors. Thanks for your support. Appreciate it. And look, if you're interested in any of our merch, I think there's a a banner or something, there, you know. Pick up your merch. Appreciate the support. For those of you coming back, those badass remarks, building each other up, investing, and getting feedback from those who just needed time. You see, this is what narcissists hate about you. You know how to self-motivate. You recharge your own batteries. And you would not allow them to try and contain you. Warriors, get out there and own it. Play that country song backwards. Get your sanity back. Get your house back. Get your boat back. Your dog back. <laughs> and your peace. It's never goodbye, warriors. It's always until next time. Les mando besos y abrazos. Namaste. <laughs> Jesse, what are you doing today? We're going to skydive today. We're going to skydive. <laughs> Leap of it. Hey, that's what this is. Doing it for the tribe, the that's, warrior tribe. Do you know how high we're going? Did 14, they tell you? 14,500 Close. 14,500 feet, yep. And then we're going to be right. falling at? A high rate of speed. <laughs> very fast. We're going to be falling very fast. <laughs> we're going to be falling at 100, high. 120 miles an hour. Sweet. Have you ever gone that fast before? No, I have not. Okay, are you ready to go that fast? I'm ready. Okay. We're going to do it today. <laughs> you got my back. Yep. Oh, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get your face, but you know, your TI will have your All back. Right. What All right. made you want to skydive? What What brought you here today? Facing fear. Yeah? Are you afraid of Facing heights? Facing fear, head on. No. <laughs> no? <laughs> I'm afraid of not trying new hey, opportunities. There you go. I'm afraid of living in the woulda, shoulda, coulda, and I'm not going to do it. Lead and live by example. There you go. You heard it here first from Jesse. All right, you ready to go? Yeah. Let's go. Let's do it. Woo! Hold me close till I get up. Time is barely on our side. I don't want to waste what's left. 
The storms we chase are leading us And love is all we'll ever trust Yeah, no, I don't wanna waste what's left And I will go Through the wastelands, through the highways Till my shadow turns to sun rays And I sword fight uh, so I guess we'll have to call it a draw there you go we'll have to do it again <laughs> all right when are you gonna get your license now I'm gonna work on it tomorrow <laughs> I'll well, be back yeah, see, right. thank you for jumping with us this guy oh, Lone Star. Man, do you have anything you'd like to mine. say what an honor badass crew I love it here the hospitality just phenomenal five stars if there were ten I'd give it to you we'll take ten that's fine <laughs> <laughs> my brother Oh, what a fun ride. Hey, man, glad y'all came out. Come and see us again. Thank you.